Hey guys, we are live. Welcome to another episode of Get Real with Raj. Give us a couple minutes here. Hi guys, how you guys doing? We're just waiting for a special guest, Jason here. He's gonna be joining us very shortly. Give me one second. I'm getting Jason here right now. Oh. Okay guys, before we get started, today's episode is gonna be about rental properties. Oh my God, the man himself is in the building, guys. We have Jason with Ace Agencies. So before we get further, guys, I've known Jason for almost like, I don't know, years now. This guy's one of a kind, a gem in the game. And when it comes to rental properties, I don't know. I think this guy's the best in the game. His team gets the job done, they rent properties, and get you top dollar. But with that being said, Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself before uh, we get started. Hey, Raj. Just testing. You can hear me, right? Yes. You're in awesome. green zone. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, thanks. Thanks for having me here, man. I appreciate that. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I've been watching your show for quite some time. I love it. So, again, thanks for uh, letting me be on your little show here on Instagram. Anyway, my name is Jason, as you all know now. Um, I've been in the property management business for about, about professionally about seven years. And... Uh, I mean, seven years ago, kind of started from zero and uh, started growing the business. And now we're, we're approximately managing about, start from zero, like just straight scratch, nothing. And from zero, now we're managing about 650 rentals across Fraser Valley, both residential, commercial, mainly residential. So quite some experience. Um, I don't do this by myself. We have a big team now and uh, the team is will make some magic happen. So I can't take credit for all this. It's, it's, it's our team. That should Beauty. take credit. You're the man, Jason. I know I've been working directly with you for a while now. And before we get started here, I know we're talking about rentals, but a big news hit the market today. We got a 1% interest rate hike. I know it's going to be affecting lots of people. And it's going to be, you know, cash is king at the end of the day. When your payments get higher, it is stressful for a lot of people out there. Um, with that being said, rental is one way we, uh, you know, navigate around interest rates because, you know, I think rental's increasing right now, um, but there's also some issues that come with rentals and there's ways also to increase rents and uh, so on and so forth. So can you kind of just kind of give your input on what's uh, going on and uh, what can we do well, here? Um yeah, this is a huge topic. Uh, it's it's been pretty like surreal to see what's going on and how the market's changing and the movement of it. Um, there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear going on right now, and I get it. We, you know, prices are high, prices are potentially dropping. Some places already dropped. Interest rates are going, uh, mortgage rates are going up, and uh, I, I mean, I don't deal with the sales in particular indirectly. I do it indirectly because I deal with the rental side. And I mean, th this is a moment of time to, you know, you know, control your, your control yourself and, and be able to navigate through this tough time. And if you're able to maintain and build your cash flow right now, you'll make it through this storm. I've seen this before growing up. Um, I've experienced something similar to this in 2018. Uh, I don't, a lot of people didn't, don't, rec don't remember or don't recognize we did experience uh, a minor, I guess, a little dip in during 2018. It was a huge, it was a slowdown, but no one really talked about it. But we've navigated through that. We've navigated through 2008. And I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm very confident, actually, that we're going to navigate through this as well. So home prices are coming down. That's what we're noticing on my end. I'm noticing interest rates. People can't afford homes. Uh, at that level, so they, the prices are naturally coming down. But what about rental? Is rental uh, going up or is it going down or is it stable? Where, could, where do we kind of stand with that and also uh, the demand for rental? Uh, great question. Um, you're going to start seeing a lot of reports online about what the vacancy rates are, what's happening, price going up and down. Don't believe any of it. It's already delayed by six months to a year, right? Um, what you want to see is what's actually going on and speaking to maybe property managers or realtors in the area 
and really asking them questions about what's going on. But in my, in my opinion, and we, we focus heavily on the lower mainland. And what I'm seeing right now is uh, I'm not seeing uh, prices now technically going down. They're, 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 they're maintained. You're not getting top dollar. It's not going to happen. So your expectations have to be lowered. Um, but there is a supply of tenants looking for rentals, right? Um, the, 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 there's a, there's, there isn't a direct correlation of the house price versus rentals. They're, they're, like if you, if you were to lose $200,000 on the house, does not mean you're going to lose $500,000 a month in your rent. Yes. It, it, there is a small correlation in terms of like you may lose a couple hundred or three hundred dollars a month, but you're not going to lose a significant amount of money. Just just be prepared that you may not get top dollar or the expected amount that you thought you were going to get. Now, as of right now, this summer, we're seeing experiences slow down, which is expected. A normal summer, the rental market is always slow, no matter what okay. you no matter what happens, COVID or not, inflation and interest rates, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be slow. August 15th. And after that, it will pick up in the rental market. Uh, I am seeing a lot of rentals on the market than before. Okay. That is that is for sure. And but this is not something I haven't experienced before. And this was actually expected. Uh, we have talks weekly with our team, and we talk about what's about to happen. And uh, with the slowdown, we always get a, uh, a ton of rentals on the market at the same time. And when right now, because there's so many rentals on the market, people who are renting themselves. They may say like, oh, I'm not getting any calls. I'm not being able to rent at this price. I would say, do not fear. This is expected. Summer is going to be slow anyway. It's going to pick right back up and the market's going to start flowing again. Because I, I remember even a few months ago last year, there were renters out there that couldn't find places. And it was a crazy peak. So those crazy prices that were happening even a few months ago for rental are starting. You're noticing a little change, but the demand is still there. Like you're not gonna get crazy top dollar. You'll get some a good number though, because the demand Absolutely. is still there for rental. And okay, so that means, so that that is good news. So at least the rentals are standing put, and uh, we can afford our mortgages. Um, uh, don't be surprised if the rental market goes nuts in, by September. Like I'm okay. talking, like people outbidding each other. Really? Even if the market's going down, don't be shocked by it. It is quite possible, and I, I'm starting to see, uh, like, like I, I'll judge it by volumes, and I, I'm big on statistics, and I, I look at our call volume, or, you know, our people asking for showing, requesting showings. It's starting to pick up very quickly okay. right now. So uh, don't be surprised if you start seeing lineups again, or people trying to outbid each other, or trying to offer you incentives to just rent the place. So in because, your opinion... Yeah, Summer might be a little slow, but come September, there's a good chance it's going to pick right up and the rental market's good. So my thing is, let's just say I just bought a place. It was tenanted previously at a lower amount or I owned a place for three, four years. Um, I got a few properties, but now my payments just went up and I, I'm stressed out. I got to come up with the money, but I got old rent coming in. I want more money in my pocket. How can I do this? Do I start an Airbnb? Do I have to kick this guy out, renovate the place? Like, I know there's some legalities involved, but like, yeah. as a landlord, if I have to pay my bills, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I probably have to do something. Help me out here, Jason. I'm calling you. Help me <laughs> out. What, what can we do? Some basic tips, maybe. Uh, I do get this call <laughs> often, <laughs> almost like on a daily basis now. It's a, it's, I can't give you a direct answer on this. I'll tell you why. The, 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 the BC tenancy laws are designed to protect the tenant. Uh, and, and if you raise a rent above the, the allowable rate, even if the tenant agrees, you could get screwed over within, within the two-year span. So even if the tenant agrees to pay you more, say they can come back after you. Yeah, unfortunately, the that's... Tenancy laws, okay. Remind uh, me of that, examples. not to do that, okay. Well, like, people do this all the time. I mean, I've done it myself. I have had mutual agreements, and tenants understand, owner understands. Even though the tenant signs a mutual agreement to increase uh, rent above uh, the guided line, uh, the, above the allowable rate, it can, it can still be disputed in court, and you'll have to return the difference. 
Okay. And I'll tell you why. I've, I, I, I'm part of a bunch of associations, right? One of them is BC Landlords, or Landlord BC, sorry. And they're, they're, they represent... Uh, sorry. I, I lost your audio. I got cut sorry, got it. let me just... I think I'm back. Yeah, I'm you're back, back line. Okay. okay, you're back Sorry. with us, buddy. Yeah. Calls are coming in. My apologies. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, so everyone, all the legal professionals have stated themselves, like, sign the mutual agreement above, um, sign the mutual agreement, right? Lawyers have said the same thing. And however, it's been disputed. And a tenant disputed this, even though they signed it. And they won. Well, like it was a clear, like I, I saw, like everyone was in agreement, but the the art, art of arbitration did not approve of it. They said it's it considered illegal. You're circumnavigating the rules and the laws that are already in place. This is just not legal. Sorry, it's not going to work. So well, you can do it unless it gets disputed. There's a chance that you may lose all that. And let's just say I got a house. It's two stories. I rented it to one guy. I'm thinking, okay, how do I? make this cash flow. I want to rent the basement separate. I want to rent the top separate. Can I actually kick this guy out and rent it to two different parties? Or is that like a no-go? So You're killing me here, man. I know, the, <laughs> the advice I'm going to give you, nobody left to hear. And yes. I'm giving you the straight facts and straight goods. and I, Because I see all ends of this, right? Yes. If you, uh, if you kick a tenant out and you separate the home, the, the tenant has a right to see you for one year's worth of rent. Oh, damn. Okay. Like, it, it's, okay, this, so, this is part so of the you pro can, supply problem. So in words, yes, you can try doing these things. Could it work? Maybe. But understand the ramifications. People can come after you. And Absolutely. you might. Okay. So and, uh, could it be done? Yes. but It can, it can be. Uh, the ramifications are this. Uh, they can sue you for one year's worth of rent. Nobody, like, this, this is something that's asked all the time and I, I'm giving the straight goods and I, I, I see people get sued and this is a, a fairly new law, about like two years now, about a year and a half, and, but it's finally being understood by both sides and tenants especially are now under, like before you could sue, uh, the, the tenant could sue the landlord uh, three months or four months and sometimes it wouldn't be worth their time. Now it's one year that we're talking up to twenty thousand to forty thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, so you have people camping out of the house, making deals with the neighbors, taking pictures, recordings, knocking on the door to see who's living there. Wow. That's how far this is going. I've seen the evidence on both ends, and it's unreal what people are doing. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Most people don't have thirty thousand dollars in the account. I get it. A lot of us don't, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a big problem. So can it be done? Totally things can be done. Is it legal to do? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. What, 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 okay. Now third scenario here. Okay. You, you turned down two of them. Now the third one. I want to kick this guy out and change him to Airbnb. <laughs> I'm seeing Airbnbs pop up. It seems like they make money. Can it be done? Hey. I know there's some city codes. Some cities allow it. Legal, illegal, but like, just let's just say they allow it. And for some reason, I have the great idea. I want to change this into Airbnb because I heard it makes two times as much as uh, regular rent does. So, uh, You know what? There's a clause. Okay, there's no direct clause of not allowing this either. Okay. There's nothing it says you can't. The you're, 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 that's what we like well, to have. You, there's a uh, no. There's a there is a document you can serve your tenant because you're turning this into a, a commercial um, business because Airbnb is considered a commercial business. It does not okay. fall under our Residential Tenancy Act. It falls under a different commercial act, and so it's you're actually changing the entire scope of it. Okay. So technically it is legal i've never personally experienced it and i would have to do further due diligence on this to be honest yes uh i had to hit me with the curveball man 
it's a it's a conversion. So you say if the, the conversion. Guys, guys, Jason's getting happen. too many sure. calls. As you can see, the rental market is busy. <laughs> but uh, okay, so this is kind of a gray area. Not too many people have tried this. There is a potential of doing this, but this is same thing. Like it's a maybe. Yeah, I, 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 am I connected again? I'm not sure. Yeah, you're connected now. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I, I, there has been clients uh, or friends of mine who have been successful in doing so. And they, were, they converted a building and they converted it into a, a, a business. And, but what they did was they airbnb all the rooms or the units above and uh, nothing came out of it. There, there was no, you can't really sue based on that. So if you, it's, okay. it's called a conversion, right? And it is definitely doable. It's a gray area. I don't know the, the exact legalities because I haven't done enough, again, due diligence on this, but I've seen this done before. That's all this I'm is something say. that might, maybe you might want to look at this like as a, as a landlord, potentially look into this. Maybe this might work. So Airbnbs, and while we're on the talk of Airbnbs, um, are you noticing more and more come up and is it really worth it? Uh, compared to regular long-term rentals, in your opinion? Um, okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm involved in uh, Airbnbs all across Fraser Valley. And uh, I've seen it's, it is definitely lucrative. It definitely is. And I, I do like it. There is a great area that cities are now clamping down. Like you said, a lot of cities do not allow Airbnbs. And... There's no, uh, the legislation on Airbnbs and uh, it's different in each city. Uh, Vancouver is, has their own committee. They shut down Airbnbs if it's not legal. And I've experienced it myself. <laughs> uh, Surrey is pretty hardcore as well, right? Uh, but it is lucrative. There's a lot of money to be made. You definitely get more uh, a high return than you would if you were to rent out your home as a long-term rental, right? But uh, we, we, we got a spe Airbnb specialist that just joined us, Gartaj, from uh, all the way from Kelowna. What's up, brother? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Airbnbs, uh, so you think that it's a good way to make, like, let's just say if I got a property, maybe if I don't have tenants, like, let's just say, like, it's a clean slate. There is good money to be made through Airbnbs as long as your location, I'm assuming location matters um, and the type of properties, like adding a hot tub or extra, oh, extra yeah. things like that. I, Airbnbs, you can, you, you'll, you'll definitely, if you do it right, because it's, it's like a whole different business altogether and it's all about service, right? And you really, yeah. you, you can't, it's not passive in terms of you need someone dedicated to this, right? You got to be someone, the customer care, you know, the supplies, the cleaning, et cetera, right? Make sure things are done right. But the return on investment is much higher than it would be if it was a long-term rental. So you that, can put that a little bit sure. more work, sweat equity? but yeah. you can make more cash. Absolutely. And is that something you guys manage down here or, or is that something um, you don't stay I away don't from? Do direct, I don't do directly, no. I mean, I, it's because the legislation, it is not as big in the lower mainland yet. Okay. Um, I, I am involved personally, but I don't do it as a professional service as of right now. I do have recommendations. It's, you know, for like, more like a like, personal. Like, like Gertaj, right, right there. He, he, <laughs> he's a specialist. <laughs> I know, I know, he's, he's killing in Kelowna. I, 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 um, but like there's companies out there who do this. Okay. So, so let's just say now if I got a place, there aren't too many loopholes that we can do. We can try, but there's a good chance for, to increase rent. It is tough. The BC Tenancy yeah. Act is definitely on the favor for uh, landlords. They are looking towards for the tenant side. Um, now let's just say I bought a house recently or i'm buying a house right now interest rates going up i'm scared of my payment but it's completely empty would you suggest adding a suite underneath or what other ways are there that we can make it more cash flow um okay so i i do recommend separating and creating suites because you're you're mitigating um a potential damages or losses like and it's easier to afford uh, full houses are super expensive. Like your your what mortgage is going to be what four to five grand on average. You're not going to get that much money in rent if you rent to one family. And, oh, sometimes you may, but it's a huge risk. Is what if they stop paying? Then you're hooped with that huge mortgage payment. 
Um, what you want to do is if you separate it, you can now mitigate potential damages and you have two different families or two different groups of people renting out the upper and basement. If say one doesn't pay, at least you have cash flow come from the other unit. And it's just a lot more affordable. It's easier. Families are, I am starting to see a lot, all people from all type, all walks of the world are now moving in together in families. They're not living alone. You're seeing what us Indians have done forever. Now you're starting to see it. Everyone do that. They're all moving in with their parents or in-laws or, you know, siblings. And it's making what, a big difference. What else can we do? Okay, we split the house in half. It's a two-story. Um, we're on a large yard. Do you, what are we renting out, like, yard space or, like, a workshop or garage? Like, what can we do, man? Like, you know, we're going to have guys that are sure. stressed out, man. What can we do? We got to get right here. Okay, so uh, the few things I can tell you right now, right off the bat, um, People have been getting lazy. Landlords have been getting lazy. They've been renting any, anything, like any piece of shit was being rented in the day, right? Well, you know that. I know that. We all know that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't even clean, right? Like that was, people were getting away with it and people were happily accepting it. Now, you, you can't get away with that anymore. You, you, the place just needs to be clean. Do a quick paint job if you can. Like put some sweat equity in there. Clean the place up. Make it look nice. Look at presentable. You don't need anything crazy. Less is more. You know, don't make a crazy garden. Just make it simple. Make everything, just make sure everything works. Take okay. that time and effort and clean that kitchen and clean the bathrooms up. Okay. It does not take a lot of energy to do it. It just takes sweat equity. And so if you're renting so something, you know, just keep it simple. Don't make it too crazy. No flash. My needs to look nice. Absolutely. And then... And then if you have a large backyard or if you have access to your backyard, make it so then they can park larger vehicles. Maybe make like a, a, a fence in the back where you can park an RV or more storage. Um, now, can we rent I've, that out separately? You could, or you could find a family that is in need of that. Now you have a, a larger surplus. Like I, I, I talk about, maximizing not just money rent, rental income but maximizing quality of tenant because if you have a quality of tenant you'll you'll sleep better at night knowing that your rent is going to come you don't have to worry about missing that payment that jackass tenant not paying you right you want yeah to that's have, another thing i think right? we're going to start seeing a lot more of now right potentially and the quality of tenant is so important because uh if like they're going to maintain your home they're they're, they're going to pay on time they're going to they're the ones who care of your one point five two million dollar home, right? Like you don't you don't want someone to ruin the place and damage it. And after they move out, you end up with twenty thirty thousand uh, dollar repair damage, right? So it's not always about maximizing the rent; it's also about maximizing the quality. And if you have a good family in there, they'll last there a long time, three years, four years. At the end of the day, would you rather pay three four thousand a month out of pocket or three to five hundred dollars out of pocket, right? So yeah. we have, you have to manage expectations. So Krita just dropped some call, something in the comments there. You, uh, you can master these for rental problems, at least right as Airbnb. Yeah, Gurtaj, that's right. Uh, he's, it's master leasing is a big thing out here. Driveways, renting out driveways. Have you seen that, Jason, happening uh, in the, the Fraser Valley? Because I know there's a lot more RVs out in the, the Okanagan. And... Uh, not here as much, man. Uh, not directly. It's not a significant amount of demand for that. Uh, again, it, 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 it varies from city to city. It, like out in Surrey, it's a little bit different. You know, then you go for the Langley, Absinthe, Chill. I cannot see as much. Could we rent out this stuff kind of separate? Like, I'm you just could. thinking, like, would that be so covered under uh, the BC tenancy? Or would that be separate? Like, renting out uh, yards or uh, renting out you know what I mean? Parking, it, garage. Would that be under the Tenancy Act? Or? No, no. It would be under a commercial lease. Leasing. Okay, guys. So, so if you got that stuff going, you can raise the rent on that. <laughs> you can. Roger's right. So uh, that, that is if, if the density allows and uh, the bylaws allow it to and there's a demand for it, you will do commercial lease on this. And the commercial lease would not require uh, the same Residential Tenancy Act to pause. So what that means is you could actually... Uh, create your own terms. Um, if they don't pay rent, you could lock them out on it. You could, you could do. You have so much more control over a commercial tenancy, and you could literally raise the rent annually by 
whatever you dis what do you agree upon so it's it's pretty good it's pretty solid but i don't i've never rented a driveway but then you're <laughs> probably going to have a lot more tenants and a lot more headache i'm assuming uh, and then conflict maybe potentially right so that's just something yeah. that uh, if you're going to do that 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 is an option but yeah. i'm assuming you're probably going to need a bigger yard and have that space so someone can park um with that being said man like what are some do's and don'ts like common mistakes you see out there like common uh practices that you see like oh my god like freak stories how can we avoid some like common do's and don'ts that you would say um okay so uh, we'll talk about today now um right now people are in distress the the mortgage payments are coming out and uh thanks for the comment um what what the recommendation is don't rush it uh, yes it's going to be hard interest rates are going up mortgage payments are coming out and just because your property wasn't isn't getting sold don't rush to find the first tenant who's willing to take your home that is that is something i see again and again and again do not blindly trust people you know people are you know i would say a majority of our population is good but that yeah. small 5 to 10% will ruin your day we got one i'm going to interrupt you quickly we got one comment here mr law of attraction yes bro i believe in law of attraction to or miss i believe in it but uh right now uh, room for rentals he just mentioned or he or she mentioned room for uh rentals what's your uh, opinion on uh, rooms for rent uh yeah room for rentals um it it's not under the residential tenancy act it's under the i think it's called the innkeepers act it's like a hotels type of service like i oh. i don't know exactly know, exactly know the legislation so different rules apply okay uh but uh, you can definitely um you have far more control if you do room rentals but that requires shared space shared kitchen shared bathrooms right you can't use that room rental uh tenancy for a house and i'm assuming your insurance goes up as well right you have to get different insurance yes your 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 insurance will jump to a commercial liability insurance uh, insurance which is about 300% more than your normal residential insurance okay so it's quite a bit more but it's same thing a lot more lucrative but a lot more headache as well because now you're dealing so if you're stuck in a jam let's just say if you're stuck in a jam and you really need the extra cash you got to put in the work there's no other way absolutely. absolutely so you can do try doing the airbnb you can try doing the driveway uh, rentals garage rentals you can try doing a uh, room for rent possibly um but like you said earlier you got to put in the sweat equity at that point and be ready for more repairs i'm assuming to the property yeah. cuz you have so many yeah. people and a lot of attraction saying that it's not innkeepers um you're probably right i i don't know the exact um uh, the wording for that but that's it, it is an under residential tenancy act that's for sure right um now just be careful if there's three or more unrelated parties in a household yes right because a lot of people are starting to room more than one family or uh, tons of people in one household you have to get a different insurance for that too which can jump up again 300% which I'm I, assuming I, that's a common mistake you've probably seen. A lot oh, yeah. I think a lot of people have made that mistake most Absolutely, likely all the time. And again, three or more unrelated parties. So your normal residential tent, uh, insurance will not be covered or will not cover your house if something goes sideways. So just be extremely careful and make sure you do your inspections every 3 to 6 months, you know, like you've got to be on top of it and you cannot just say oh I I didn't know. And like God forbid something happens, your house burns down and they find a business running out of the house or you know tons of roommates living in the house and uh, in your insurance you can't just tell your insurance company i didn't know you, you they don't care you won't be covered so you got to be extremely careful so i think it's it can be okay law of attraction saying something else but i personally think it does when you got so many parties living in your home i think it is going to be harder for a guy that works 9 to 5 husband wife both working kids are in school i think that might not be the best option if you want residual income with less headache uh that's my opinion what's yours for room for rent i don't think it's easy yeah. i think you need to put in time but there are some pros and cons yeah yeah pros like I've, i've done it before um uh, what i've done in the past uh for students for example uh we've had uh, uh weekly cleaning 
that was uh, mandatory and they would go in and out and they were kind of like our eyes and ears of the place. Mm -hmm. um, the way we priced it in was it included the cleaning and it was already priced in the rental and it worked out pretty well. Uh, okay. But again, it's, it's, it goes back to systems. If you can create good systems and you can stay on top of it, it is doable. Like the landscaping, you have a landscaping team there and the cleaning uh, team there. You're pretty good overall, right? Uh, but it is a lot more, uh, there are a lot of people moving in and out. So there's a lot more work to it for the move-ins and move-outs. And then going back to your uh, previous uh, uh, do's and don'ts, you mentioned don't pick the first tenant that walks in the door. Uh, even though, you know, you need to rent the place out, you're stressed out, you need to pay the bills. You would say screen your tenants. What's some good screening, like basic screening that you could, advice you could give the guys out there? Um, good question. If screening is, you got to you gotta take your time. Like if someone says, I want the place immediately, like right now, you got to question why. Like why the heck do you need the place right now, tonight? Like what situation are you in that requires you to need a home today and most of the time I'm not going to say for all right um most of the time they're running from another place and that is definitely a concern that should be for most people the other thing is um you can screen you know do a financial background check right you can't discriminate for a lot of things unfortunately here in bc but you can mm -hmm. discriminate based on their financials Okay. Do your due diligence. Do your background check as best as you can. You can. See where the guy works. Has he been working there for a while? Is there history? Check with the family. Is that family? Who else is coming right? A lot okay. of common mistake I see is they only check one person. You should check every adult that walks through the door or every adult that wants to move in and look mm -hmm. at their backgrounds. Look and do the landlord checks. You know, check the financials. Like dig deep. Dig as deep as you can and make sure they can even afford the place. There's many, many times I've, I've uh, declined. We decline people, I would say 70% of the people come through the doors, we decline them because their financials don't make sense. And uh, they can't find provide clarity either. Okay. So they, okay, and then would you recommend monthly, month to month rent or a uh, one-year lease? Uh, I do one-year leases. I, I like doing one year leases. It really depends on what your timeline looks like, what kind of what what you want, what's your goals, what your goals look like. If you're going to flip the property or not, I do I do minimum one year lease for all my rentals. So long term rental, you definitely want a lease signed and sealed, yeah. and that protects uh, that kind of gives you commitment. Let's just say the guy within the one year lease he leaves in six months. Is there anything that covers us as the landlord? Yeah, yeah it, you are technically protected. Um, it, what your job is to do is uh, mitigate losses. So you have to put it up for rent as soon as you find out and try to mitigate uh, losses. Now, if the tenant doesn't give you proper notice and, or if you can't rent at the same price or lower, um, you have the right to sue the tenant for the damages until it's rented. But you also have to showcase that you're doing whatever you can in your power to re-rent the place. Okay. But that does not give you an opportunity to uh, it does not give you an opportunity to raise the rent at that time. If you raise the rent, you can't sue the current tenant. Okay. So pretty much let it go. It pretty much gives you a commitment that, hey, this guy's actually committing. If a guy can't commit, he's the wrong guy. You don't want him in the property. Yeah. Now, if the tenant runs on you and you can't find the tenant, there's not much you can do. Okay. Like I know a lot of traction, they keep, that person keeps saying you're oh, different things, right? And they're right, like you can't, if, if the tenant literally runs on you and you, they, they don't even work the same job and uh, they have nothing like, no assets or anything going for like behind them. It's very little you can do, unfortunately. And well, there's, the there's a legal lacks. aspect and then there's a reality. Legal aspect, yes, yeah. you can. Do you want the headache? No, reality, just move on, but. Yeah, and uh, okay, so I see the comment. Um, Fair. I mean, you know, I'll tell you one thing, Raj, is like good people. And I will, again, majority of good people will give you the time and they'll, they'll, you'll, you can have uh, proper, you'll have proper discussions with, you can negotiate with them and how they can break the lease. And I would say eight out of 10 times, it's been awesome for us, right? And yes, we've been able to find tenants in time. And there's been times where the tenant, previous tenant would have to pay me 15 days extra rent, right? Um, yes. But the ones who 
have a plan and they want to screw you over, they will. And you're right, it's not worth going after them. It's never, it's never really worth it because the government does not make it easy. I'll tell you that. So now, like, you know, we got guys out there um, that are working their butt off, out, you know, in work. They got these rental properties. Um, what's the benefit of them? Like, what's, how do you deal with property manager management versus doing it on yourself? Because doing it yourself, I think you're doing those ads yourself. You're screening people yourself. I know you got way more experience than me dealing with tenants on a day-to-day basis. I'm pretty sure you can pick up on clues that the average guy can't. Because sometimes you do get the guy that has the right job, the family that's doing everything right, and then the standard paperwork. You think you got it all set. Um, why, like, why would I go to a property manager versus doing it myself on Facebook Marketplace? Or something? Well, okay, I always tell my clients, like, or potential clients, like, don't don't go to a property manager if you're looking for a home run or if you're looking an easy way out. It's just not. We're not here to be this hail mary for your rental properties, right? Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll provide you and give you uh, legitimate uh, scenarios on how to go about things, right? We're going to give you the right recommendations. We're going to give you tips and tricks. We're going to do a lot of things that you may not think of or do. But our, our focus point, our clientele is the people who just don't have the time of day to go through the process, have the systems in place, and, and to go through the legalities with their tenants. And if they, if they don't want to go through the processes, they're too busy with their family, their work, their life, and they just don't want to spend all the time managing their rentals, going through a management company is a great idea. Now, you've got to do your homework in the management companies, right? I'll never say, for example, us, we made a lot of mistakes and nothing's perfect because we have so... We have control, but again, at the same time, tenant can change our mind and screw everyone over, right? And it has happened. But going through a management company is essential if you don't want to learn the process. Because the process is, is there. It's all online. It's for everyone to view, right? But if you don't have the time today to educate yourself, don't do it alone. Get professional support. Like if you're that a busy professional, you just don't want the headache. You just want, hey... I got this place rented out. Then you're kind of like, that's where property management really kicks in. Or you're going out of town, you got a property and you want it taken care of so it doesn't get run down. Uh, and I'm assuming there's common problems that occur with rental properties. They're not always uh, nice and pretty where you buy it, you rent it. Yeah. Issues happen and that's where you guys come in and deal with that stuff as well. Absolutely. Like if in the management company, you choose wherever you are. You want to make sure they got the right team, dedicated team to support not just nine to five, but 24 seven, that they have, they have their teams behind them, the contractors behind them, the tradesmen. Um, and then if a tenant was to move out, how do you go through the legal process? That, that legal process is so daunting. Like cases can take up to right now, three to six months. I have one case that's one years out. That's a daunting process to go through and try to learn everything, to understand everything. And if you don't want to go through that, hire a company. But if you have the time and day to do all that, then the, the resources are all out there. It like is if not... you're like Mr. Law of Attraction down there, yeah. go, go go do your own thing. But if you're not Mr. Law of Attraction, call Jason. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's funny, Raj, you say that. Like I deny clients all the time, especially if they think that I'm their like, safe haven, that I'm going to solve all their problems. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. It's You're still going to put the work in, right? There's a lot to do. And... Uh, no guarantees, right? But what are common expenses with rentals that you see? <laughs> plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Call Guru Plumbing, shout out to myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, like annual maintenance is key. Yeah. Um, common expenses. You know, like gutter cleaning, the basic stuff that we've always reminded people of. Plumbing, uh, you know, furnace maintenance. Those are big ones, right? Those are the major expenses come. Um, of course, like there's like fencing, there's roofing, there's, you know, I, I could go forever on this actually, but. So there's a lot main... of things, but common, <laughs> let's say it's like wear and tear. Plumbing is a big one. Heating, I guess in winter, maybe yeah. air conditioning appliances. in summer. Appliances is a big one as well. Oh, appliances. Oh, that appliances. happens on a weekly basis. So much stuff happens in appliances. And COVID did not make it things easier. In fact, it was cheaper for us to replace appliances instead of ordering parts because you couldn't get parts in, right? Yeah. Um, and you have to act fast too. 
and that's the biggest thing. I'll give you an example. If your a tenant's fridge is bro- bro- breaks down and it's hot, right? And all their meat and food goes bad. And you like, let's say you don't fix it in time and it all goes bad. They can technically sue you for all damages and uh, they're eating out expenses until it's fixed. Technically. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so you got to act fast. You got to get things done. You got to get them. You got to be on top of it. Uh, but yeah, so I'm, like, I'm just hearing a lot of lawsuits against the landlord here. You're just killing me here. I'm just, I want to like, <laughs> okay. With that being said, you got to give us some fun story. I, I've seen some videos of you back in the day dealing with some entertaining horror stories on, on site, dealing with tenants, kicking them out somehow, getting the sheriff, getting the bailiff. Throw, throw me one. Some, one fun story that you dealt with in the last uh, few years. Oh, man. I mean, I've been chased by pit bulls. Like, um, uh, okay, so like, when ten, like, I deal with low end to high end rentals. Yes. Every day of the week, right? And uh, your higher end rentals are a lot better than your lower end. Lower end tenants or lower end properties you deal with lower end tenants and they turn out, there's a lot of problems in, in this world, right? And a lot of it is to do with divorces, drug addiction, you know, or some, you know, other other problems that the mental illnesses that are out here, right? And if, let's say a tenant makes a run for it and then homeless people move in or whatever, we we are nobody likes us right when when we're out, the rent collectors the cash collectors right and uh so i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna think of some stories here but like there's been times where the cops have been called on us happens all the time okay right and it, it, they're like oh you're harassing us so you're it's against the law to harass me i'm gonna call the cops if you call me again i'm like and the the, the people threaten us all the time right but at the end of the day cops will never, ever get involved with the rental disputes. I'll tell you right now. So, so never get afraid of someone saying they're going to call the cops on you. But be very yeah. afraid of the pit bull. Oh, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> there's, there's, they will threaten you all the time. A major, major, uh, like, a lot of people experience this, and the tenant will say, get off my property. There's, you're doing nothing wrong. You're just knocking on the door. As long as you're just knocking on the door and asking to talk to them or asking for money, but if you get aggressive, that's a different story. But um, a tenant can't just say, "I'm going to." Like a tenant calls the cops on you, the the, the police will themselves will say they're not going to get involved in the dispute at all. You have to go through the arbitration. Um, I don't. I, I never want anyone to go through this, the, the the things that I've been through. Uh, you know, like dealing with homeless people, dealing with you know people who are just passed out. Did I remember this one time you had a house or something, some homeless dude broke into it and started sleeping there. Was there some, some, I don't know, there's some funky thing. There's a video. I remember you got, getting this guy out somehow. And I'm just like looking at this laughing. I'm like, thank God I'm not a property manager. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the worst is when the tenant stops paying you rent. Okay, so this tenant stops paying you rent and the, the tenant makes a run for it. But what a... What I've seen, and I'm talking about lower and lower end property, so be careful, especially the investors who get rental property, like like tear down invest, investment properties. Um, a lot of these tenants will sublet it to someone else, collect the deposit and rent from them, and they'll make a run for it. And then next thing, you don't know who the tenant is anymore. And they usually have don't have the best backgrounds, right? And they're usually gangsters or ex-gangsters or whatnot. So those guys can get very they aggressive with you. So I would say avoid that. Stay away from that. It's not ever worth getting aggressive with them. It's just to stay away. Do just go through the legal process. Go through the court process and send them legal notices. But now like for example, the back to the story you're referring to, I had a house I was I kicked out the tenants. I went through the whole eviction process, and the owner's like, "I'm gonna tear it down now." Awesome. So we got the whole house boarded up, and homeless people, about ten, fifteen homeless people, broke into the home and started living there, like as a full time living in there. And there's no electricity. A crack no shack. It became a crack shack, right? <laughs> and that time, it's never, it's never, never smart doing this on your own. This is a point. This is a part where you can call the cops. Like I, I don't okay. recommend this for anyone to go through this process. So, like the things I may do is a bit unorthodox, or I may do too much, and I need to. 
but it kind of makes my job interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you got the job done. That's all that matters. I don't yeah. want to know how you did it, but you did it. That's called that's called a Jason special, by the way, guys. <laughs> so we we do everything by the law here, by the book. We never do no curveballs. We just get the yeah. job done, right? You, well, you you never force out a tenant. Like, never get physical. Don't be aggressive. Don't don't shout. It just makes things worse. Always get a third party and their mediator involved, and to resolve things. And it it, it does help. It definitely does help. Well, Jason, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge today, spending some time with us, and I want to thank everyone that came out today to view our. Uh, Oh yeah, thank you for everyone to show up here today. And uh, if you guys have any other questions regarding rentals, this is Jason. Uh, you can uh, link up with him. He'd be happy to help you. And if you're trying to buy a rental, you can call me. So with that being said, we'll go out. Thank you once again, Jason. Hope you had a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Raj. Appreciate it. Have a good, have a good one, guys.